thank you, Jesus, that today we are loved not because of how awesome we were this past week (laughs) or how not awesome we were this past week. Thank you that your love for us is not based on those things. Father, you love us because we are simply your children. Thanks again for waking us up today. Thank you for, it sounds so cliche, but being this example for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks that we get to gather this morning and be invited into a a bigger awareness of what you're already doing in your kingdom today. Thank you. And all God's people said in their masks, amen. Hey, would you thank the band in these leaders. And would you thank those people back there that serve you every single week? And then when you go, if you've got kids, and oh, are they doing kids right now? Nope. So you know what? Just do great. You're doing great. Um, thank your waiter. It's going to be great. Okay. Tip your waiter. Yes, tip your waiter. How many of you guys were servers? Anybody? Yeah, we know. We know what's up. Okay. All right. I think that's what we're going to talk about today is tipping your waiters and waitresses. Okay. Um, we are in a series. Um, we're about to end the series here pretty soon um, on discipleship. And that's a big Christian word, but really it's, it's aiming one another towards the heart of the way of Jesus. So uh, there's something really powerful about us going, well, we can keep doing this church thing every week, which is great, or we can, once we leave this place, start aiming one another towards the heart and the ways of Jesus. So that's what we're talking about today, and we are, uh, I'm going to give you a little background, we are in the uh, last days of Jesus, um, when he was, before he went to the cross and resurrected. Uh, we're in John 13, and it's the Passover festival, the Passover meal they're about to have. And so they're in the upper room. You've all seen the pictures, you know, you've seen those pictures in the upper room. That's what's happening right here. John 13 is where we are. This is just interesting. John 13, John 14, John 15, John 16, and John 17 are all from the account of the upper room. So if you just think back of like what all is being invited in those chapters. It's all in this upper room. It's his last kind of moments as he's talking to his friends. And these friends are then going to go out and aim the rest of the world toward the kingdom of God. So it's kind of like you've got your, you've got your last night with your best people that you've been walking with for the past three years. This is what he's inviting them into. Great. Okay. I'm excited. Once again, tip your waiters. Uh, Okay. Um, All right, let's read this together. John 13. The evening, and I can just read it, you can just listen. Uh, The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, uh, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that uh, that he had come from God and was returning to God. So this is what Jesus knew. So he got up from the meal, like full of meals about to happen, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Then I'm just going to skip a little bit and give you a Timmons paraphrase. Um, Jesus, I mean, Peter just starts kind of arguing with him and bantering back and forth, which is not a big shocker because that's kind of how he rolls. And he's like, Jesus, I, you, I should, you shouldn't be you know, washing my feet. I should be washing your feet. And Jesus is like, you don't kind of know what you're talking about. I think you're awesome, but just kind of shut it. You know? and, and then Peter's like, well, if, you know, if you're just washing my feet, why don't you wash my hands and my whole body and my head? And Jesus is like, man, there's so much more going on here. So that's where we are. That was, again, Timmons' paraphrase. It's out in the library. You can get that. Um, when he had finished washing their feet, he, Jesus, put on his uh, outer clothes and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have done for you, Jesus asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I am, 
Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them, if you put them into practice. So um, this week, and we're going to end it right here, we're going to have a, um, the ushers come forward uh, with some water basins, um, and we'd love for you guys to just take off your shoes, and that's what we're going to do today. So, Can you imagine? Number one, I don't think ushers has ever, that word's ever even been spoken at Journey Church, which is awesome. <laughs> just felt good to say, felt like the right thing to say. So what would be really easy, and I've seen this done, is we start washing each other's feet, and that's kind of the point. It's like, you know what, we're going to wash each other's feet this week, which is great, and if you need to do that, that's totally great. But that's not, I don't think, the point. I think there's such a bigger, bigger point going on, a bigger story going on. And this is what I'm getting really excited about as I get to walk through this with you. Uh, if you think about communion, so communion is actually taken from this Last Supper, and my dad calls it the Lord's Snack because it's just kind of this little part of this whole meal that's inviting people into a bigger story than just the bread and the wine. But Jesus is like, at every meal they have bread and they have wine. So he's saying, when you guys gather, I've got this bread and it represents my body, it's broken, and here's this wine that represents my blood for you, shed for you that I love you guys so much. Would you just, every time you gather, and would you just remember me? Like the point, maybe it is, and you can throw stuff at me if you need to, but the point I don't think is the bread and the wine. It's what we're actually invited into that that's representing. Jesus uses the things right around him to invite us into a bigger story. Uh, when Jesus is teaching out in the fields, he tends to say, well, the kingdom of God, well, it's like a field, you know? Or he's, there are a bunch of crops, and he starts talking about the, the vines and the tree. I mean, he's just using things around him. Those aren't the point, but he's using them as this invitation and teaching into something bigger. Washing of feet, uh, I think there's something bigger going on than just washing people's feet. So, uh, if you think about it, in those days, and you know, you've, you've heard some of this stuff before, but they didn't have these cool kicks on. They were walking in sandals in just mud, nasty. I mean, just think about feet. Think about what donkeys are doing. And kids, I know I talk about poop often, but um, I mean, there's like camels and all the things are doing their things on the ground, and you know, they're just walking in it all the time. So what they do is when they would gather and eat, somebody, the lowest person in the status, the servant, would actually wash people's feet as they walked in. Because when they're sitting, they're not sitting at a nice table and their feet are underneath. They're sitting on their feet, all, the, all their business is right here. And then they're eating in that way. It's just kind of nasty. So they'd wash each other's feet. That's, well, the servants would wash the feet. So Jesus knows exactly what he's doing in this time. Right before this, again, I'm just giving you a background. Right before this, and a few other times that we're told, the disciples are arguing. They kind of start grumbling and arguing. And every time they argue, every time they grumble, it's about the same thing. You guys know what it is? Who's more important? Yeah. Who's more awesome? Who's actually going to be like the highest in the kingdom? Because Jesus only talks about the kingdom of God. That's his whole context. So because of that, everybody's like, man, I think I might be Jesus' favorite. In fact, the book of John, which I love, John often refers to himself. He doesn't really tell you it's him, but he refers to himself as the one Jesus loved. You know. They're arguing about this. Like, who's the most awesome in the kingdom? Who gets to sit at the right hand of the king? And also remember that in this season, they, weren't, they knew that Jesus kept talking about love and loving one another. And the, in a sense, the law of the kingdom is love. But they also thought Jesus was going to come and just kick butt. You know, he's going to take out the Democrats, take out the Republicans, and like, you know, do it. 
I don't know if they had that back then, but it feels right to say that right now. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God above all other kingdoms and the right ways, the righteousness, the right ways of the kingdom. And he's working all things out. This is what it kind of comes down to. Is the dis- disciples were building their own kingdoms. That's all they did. Like they just kept, I mean they're trying to like do cool stuff for God, but they started building their own kingdoms. And really that's, I, I came to this place about 12 years ago where I just saw that I've been building my kingdom, trying for the kingdom of God for so many years, and it's exhausting me, and it's just, it's getting me nowhere. And it's partly why I started writing this X on my wrist, actually. The start of it was, that I was seeing that everything I would do, I would do it for God, but not with God. If I was in a meeting about, you know, I was in these record label meetings and I could just starting to want to like schmooze and do the whole thing, but I decided that's gotten me nowhere. Jesus, what do you want? My kingdom keeps popping up. And so I write it every single day because I kind of need it every day because somehow I'm actually trying to show you a better part of myself or my kingdom. I try to polish it. I'm trying to protect it. The disciples, that's what they were doing. Uh, no shame on that, by the way. I, I'm not looking at myself going, you are so terrible. Look at what you do. Or those disciples, how dare you? Because I do it every single day. Shame is looking back going, you're terrible. And really, this is in our invitation to look forward and go, okay, I'm, I'm going to start doing this starting today. I want to see this in a different way. Jesus. All right, Matthew 20. You've probably heard this. Uh, Jesus came not to be served, but to... Sorry, maybe it didn't work. Jesus came not to be served, but to... Right. Uh, And to give his life as a ransom for many, which is a song that we sang in the very beginning. So we could just end it right now. And we've heard some really powerful, powerful... Um, thoughts and we can go out and leave this place and go man the Greek word for that got that wow wow good job Tim or wow that guy's terrible and we could just go out feeling great because that's what Jesus did we're going to go serve but there's a problem there's a huge disconnect and it's right in here and I would say it's right in you as well there's a disconnect there's a problem because I every day am waking up saying not, I mean, I'm not saying this. Like, I don't wake up going, uh, how can I get mine today? Or, how can, I, um, how can I build my kingdom today? Or, how can I be more self-absorbed today? Like, I, I don't wake up that way. But, I kind of wake up that way. Am I alone? Okay, well, this is going to be great. Once again, ushers are coming forward. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is my daily, I mean, I wake up and I, I just, I'm not, again, no shame attached to this. It just is what it is, and then we move forward. My morning routine is not, huh, Jesus, I want to join you today. And in joining you today, you're inviting me to serve people. It's just not my normal. But what if it was for just this week? What if that was a 10,000 minute practice this week that we'd actually just start waking up in the morning, I write my X on my wrist, I said, thank you, you woke me up again. And then I go, okay, oh, Jesus, I just want to join you today. And I actually want to serve people with you. Not for you, but with you. Uh, okay, here's a question. Would you just think about this for a second? What are you frustrated about today? Like, what has been frustrating for you? Don't hit anybody. Just think about it. I've asked this question before, but whose kingdom or queendom was, was threatened in this, right? Probably yours, probably mine. But the deeper question here is, what do you feel like you deserve? I get frustrated when I feel like I deserve something. 
and I'm not getting what I deserve. The, the disciples were, were actually frustrated in some ways because they're like, no, I think I should be this guy because I'm even more awesome. And, and Jesus knows this, and so what does he do? He starts the whole meal, you know, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the whole meal with this notion of like, okay, gosh, these guys, I love them like crazy, but they're kind of building their kingdoms. They're so self-absorbed. I had a, a song radio single come out, and there have just been some uh, this past week, and there have been some things that just did not work. I mean, like legit uh, things, balls that were dropped, big deals. And these past, this past month, I've been just really frustrated about a few, many different things, but really frustrated. And my wife, we're on a walk, and she, she, she called me on it, thankfully. And I just saw that, man, my joy was like getting sucked out because I've been trying to build my kingdom again. I kind of just forgot. Oh, it's not about my kingdom. What would serving look like if this week I actually pushed other people more than I pushed my own stuff this week? That's just a different ball game altogether. Like that is so anti what I know to be true and how I know how to like do the thing. And Jesus is inviting us into a bigger, bigger kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right ways. He works things out. Uh, another question that's a really good revealing one. Um, and by the way, I ask a lot of questions because I've been studying this all week and it's, been, it's just selfishly awesome for me. But then I ask questions because I want you to like take this into your own lens and not just hear the cool, here's the Greek word for this. Like, but put it into your own life story, your own lens, and then walk through it with us as a community this next week. So that's why I ask these questions. Um, any of you guys deal with pride or contempt or self-absorption? Four, five, three. Okay, we're doing great. Nine of us. That's so great. That's so great. I'm glad I'm just talking to us. I'm sure everybody at home, you raised your hands or in the car on the FM. Let me ask you again. Does anybody here deal with like pride or contempt or self-absorption? Okay, awesome. A few more. That's good. We're doing great. This is super great. I'm going to give you a, a definition for contempt. And I've given it to you before and I will continue to give you this definition because it rocks my world and I have the microphone. Okay, so the definition for contempt and I love it. This is a Dallas Willard uh, definition. Contempt is believing that you're better than someone else, that you're smarter than someone else. Contempt is believing that you are better than somebody else or smarter than somebody else. And I've told you this story because it happens often, and I keep writing the XMRS, is that when I'm driving and somebody cuts me off, you know, I've told you that I, I, I give them a nice wave, just like, oh my gosh, no problem at all. But in my heart, I'm like, you're an idiot. You're actually, I'm better than you, just so we know. And that's really what's going on in my heart. Um, you know, this past week when somebody tells me that, man, these earthquakes and fires, I think Bill Gates is behind it. I'm like, yeah. I may, and guys, maybe that's true. It totally could be true. I don't know. But I, I, I go to a place and I go, I think you're losing it. But you guys, it is revealing something about my heart. It's not about the presenting issue that we're talking about. It's actually what's going on in here that Jesus is referring to. He's not even necessarily dealing with this stuff. It's the stuff that's going on in my heart. So my heart is contemptuous in that moment because I'm going, you know what? I'm kind of better than you. Am I alone in this? I mean, how often is that happening? And that person's looking at me going, man, you don't see what's going on. And there's contempt going on. I mean, it's just, we're just slinging contempt everywhere. I'm better than you, you're better than me. The disciples were kind of, it was creeping in, contempt. Okay, who in your life acts as though they're better or smarter than you? Just think about that for a second. Or have you ever felt that way? Again, don't hit your neighbor. Who in your life do you feel better than or smarter than? You 
here's why I'm so excited to just do this with you in this next week, this next line. It's like, poof. you know, every time I speak or teach or write something, there's always something that I go, uh-oh, that just, yep, thank you, Jesus. That was actually for me, and hopefully it's for other people. But this really excites me. Serving is a remedy for contempt. It's a remedy for pride. Serving is a remedy for self-absorption. And we are so self-absorbed. I mean, just... Da, 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 da. Oh my. I mean, it's just all day long. We are self-absorbed. Serving is the remedy for pride, for contempt, thinking I'm something better than somebody else. That's like, that's pretty profound. My brother-in-law, we used to be a part of this, um, this motel community in California, and there were many ladies of the night with their employers there, and um, there were families that all lived in this one bedroom, one room, you know, room in the motel, a ton of homeless people, and and there was this one guy that was a part of this community that um, he was in a wheelchair and just could kind of barely speak, that's all, you know, drunk all the time. And um, never forget when he, we invited all this community because it became our community for three years. And we invited them over to a Super Bowl party and I was kind of like, maybe a few of them might not show. Is that okay if they don't show? Because I don't want to bring that in my house. revealing. It's okay. I'm, it's just revealing stuff. Because I'm kind of pretty, I kind of want my house to not have these things. My brother-in-law in that same season, he um, would go for a month. Every day he'd go to the motel and we got him a room, this guy a room, and he would bathe him, wash him, put like ointment on him. You know, when Jesus is cleaning these guys' feet, it was like in all the stuff, right? It was like in the midst of it. It wasn't just humbling, it was humiliating. For Jesus, I mean, think of all the reasons why Jesus should be the one who's being served. He was there at creation, you know? He's God. I mean, he's like the deal, and yet he was the one... And I kind of still am like, well, yeah, Jesus, you got those cool credentials, but I've got this and this, and I think I deserve this and this and this. And I'm frustrated because this isn't happening, you know? What's that in your life? My neighbor, this past week, um, well, I'll just say that we have a, a, a widow a lady that just, her husband just died. They've been married 50 years and um, just this year, and she's awesome. And a neighbor um, who's a Jesus follower and just an awesome guy. He's an executive, you know, he's got plenty of money, and um, he got out of his hot, nice outfit and got on his scrubs and just without making a deal of it at all, just went over and just did her whole lawn because it was looking pretty raggedy. That's just, there's something beautiful about kind of like just getting low, just staying low. He had every right to pay for some guy to come do that, and maybe he could have contempt to say, <laughs> I'm a little bit too lofty to do this job, but I'll pay you to do something. Or he just like got out there and did it. That's just beautiful. We, don't, we surely don't need like an evangelism class going, here's what you need to know. Here's how you can argue with somebody and really get them into our Christian club. It's like, nope, he just actually lived it. He represented Jesus to this girl. My, but my brother-in-law represented Jesus to this whole community, to this guy. A new command, Jesus says a little later in John 13, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must. You must love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Um, I am pretty good at loving people that love me and agree with me. Just interesting that Jesus actually washed Judas' feet, too. So, who do you disagree with? <laughs> like, what would that even look like this week? 
to join Jesus in that moment and just be aware. Like, Jesus, what would it look like if I was able to serve somebody without something getting in something in return, even the people that I disagree with or disagree with me? Again, this could turn into a total, like, doing fest where we're just doing things for God. Well, I'm going to do the right thing here. It's the right thing to do. And I don't think that's the heart behind this either. We're literally joining Jesus so that that our role is just to be more aware this week. Go, huh, what are you up to? I mean, guys, I know it's, we say this so often, but what if it is that simple? Now, acting upon this is a whole different ballgame. But we join him as he's inviting us, saying, gosh, there's a pretty big need right there. It might even be humiliating. But just love that person well. You are a representer of Jesus. And if we're representers of Jesus, his first act was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve people by washing the crap off their feet. Some people measure discipleship by purity of doctrine, by precise orthodoxy, but the indicator here is love for one another. I just wrote this down because I was, it's good for me. Aren't you just tired of being self-absorbed? Like there's something so tiring about being so self-absorbed. Love one another with brotherly affection. Like that's like intimate affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Romans. When you do things, do not let selfish or pride or contempt be your guide. Instead, walk humbly, having a right view of yourself. That I'm not saying, I'm so bad. I'm going to now go down. It's like I'm loved like crazy. I can't earn anything from God today whatsoever. And because of that, I get to walk humbly. That's, that's humility. So instead, walk humbly and give more honor to others than to yourself. In humility, value others above yourselves. In humility, regard others as better than yourselves. It's not about washing other people's feet. It's joining Jesus in the everyday rhythms of our lives and sometimes outside of the normal rhythms of our lives. Here's the question for us, the main one. Who might Jesus be inviting you to serve this week in this next season? I mean, let's just take it a day at a time. But like, (laughs) Jesus might be inviting us to join him and just kind of stay a little lower this week. Not seeking first my kingdom or your queendom, but seeking first the kingdom of God. Who might Jesus be inviting you to serve this week? Who do you know that's like in a season of need? Jesus, he just met needs. That was kind of how he rolled. When I do the dishes, I hate dishes. Like even abhor dishes. It's that that much. Um, But when I'm practicing the ways of the kingdom um, I do the dishes at other people's houses and it's more so that I can pray for those people it's like a practice that I put in to go man stay stay low Timmons I'd much rather everybody else do the dishes but I want to do the dishes because it's a practice for me because I know I'm so self-absorbed that I it's like what if I just practice praying for each person that is a nasty dish, but you know what? God help them to eat better. You know, I mean, whatever that prayer is. But really, it's what's that? What was our practice? I did a podcast this past week, and somebody basically was asking me who influenced you in your life, and I I got emotional just thinking of all the different um, people that put their thumbprint on me in high school and junior high, in the high school and junior high ministry at, at my community. Like, they, they served Jesus, and they walked with Jesus, and they joined Jesus as he shaped me through them. And maybe in this season, that might be something for you. 
there's a way to actually love junior high and high school students really well. By the way, that community that hangs out, the, the volunteers have a blast. If you want community, you can find it there. But maybe that's some, a way that you get, you get to serve. Would you close your eyes? If you feel comfortable doing that. If you want to see where your kingdom is revealed and being revealed, question we ask often, what are you giving your attention to? Money, where you're spending your time, again, not shame, but moving forward. What would it look like this week to actually ask people questions? Instead of people asking you questions, what would it look like to turn that this week and it becomes an actual practice this week of serving other people. What might that be in your world? Holy Spirit, would you open our eyes, even now as we sing these next songs, open our eyes to see what you're inviting us into. Who is Jesus inviting you to join him and serve this week? Thank you.